السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله سيدي if uh, negative thoughts are from shaitan being too close but we are in the month of Ramadan where he is locked away what does it mean if we are still extremely negative <laughs> means that <laughs> But the shaitanic influence on the nafs is still very strong because his shariq means one partner got locked up, the other one is still free, right? So shaitan got locked up but the nafs is still uh, in between thumma amanu, thumma kafaru and is uh, casting all sorts of negativity, negative thoughts and energies and uh, in a state of or trying to reach a state of submission for Allah and the nafs and energies of other people and surroundings also begin to cast upon the believer. They're influenced by the energies of all their surroundings. So lots of negativities are trying to come towards the mind of the believer, not so much the heart but the mind of the believer to cast into their thought and into their brain. So the protection is through the zikrs, the washing, keeping wudu, keeping the practices and the salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad and understanding that the waswas and a'udhu billah and trying to push it from the heart, push it from the mind and to, to keep the focus of the tafakkur. That's why the, the practice of the tafakkur is so difficult is to discipline yourself to keep that consciousness, to keep the conscious state that I'm with today and it's not easy and the shaitan keeps making us to lose the thought and drift into different thoughts and… But once you practice that and become disciplined in that, then at all times you try to regain that. When too much whispering comes then you begin to make your istighfar, make your salawats that the energies around are trying to, to put into us uh, a negative understanding the, the foods of uh, other people, everything has an energy. So how that energy is affecting us inshaAllah is then the, the understanding. And we become more and more sensitive to you know our own understanding and our own surroundings. So try to keep as, as, uh, as pure an environment as possible so that not to have those difficulties. Put your taweezes, keep yourself in wudu, keep yourself with the meditation and tafakkur. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, there's no guarantees, it doesn't stop. So it's always a matter of shaitan is always trying to attack. And the believer is always fighting and struggling back. So if somebody asks, well when, when does this fight stop? It's when you take your last breath and you enter the grave and it doesn't even stop there because now there's a battle inside the grave. So this is not something that you look to get rid of it but it's a continuous fight on how do I fight it. So that's, that's the concern, how do you reinforce yourself with your practices, with your spirituality, with your understandings and your knowledges. And imagine those whom are studying the way and understanding how difficult it is. Imagine those whom don't study and what type of negativities must be surrounding. At least the people and the students of knowledge, they're understanding and they keep all of the fortifications and all of the understandings and recitations. And those who don't know, then you truly understand how much they're cast into darkness and difficulty and they don't even know it. So that, that's the, the, the guidance from it and the understanding of it that what Allah has given is so immense.
السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سعیدی وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ Please forgive my lack of adab and understanding. Could, could you please elaborate more on the three locks of Satan on us and the reality of opening the sin to open the sheen? Is there a connection of these huruf with those in the kursi and the arsh? Thank you for everything. Ooh, too detailed. That, that's in its own uh, weekend celebration. <laughs> That's too too much of a detailed question. That that requires a whole whole time period just given to that. And what most of the audience will be lost when we enter into the hurufs and those who know Arabic or are familiar with huruf through their their background and their studying of Arabic, then it, it's more easier for them. People coming new will be lost. But the main understanding that. That Allah has put upon the believers, a lock upon their ears, their eyes, and a, a veil over their heart. So that the, their eyes and their ears are locked, and the heart is locked, and it's like a khiswa, like a sheet that's upon the Kaaba, is there's a sheet upon the heart of the believers. And shaitan's goal is to keep those locks there that uh, from birth they're open, that we're born pure, that we hear, we see and that the heart is not veiled from the heavens. And it's the mothers and the parents that change the direction of the child, the circumstances of dunya and whatever environment dunya is putting upon people, these locks begin to build upon our reality. So our hearing becomes locked and we no longer hear the inspirations of the heaven and we hear ourselves with our nafs and shaitan whispering continuously, that which is not good for us, that which has no benefit for us and make us always to think short term and not long term. Puts a, a veil and a block upon our eyes because of the sins and bad character, the eyes that once could see the heavens become veiled from them. And shaitan makes sure these locks are continuously upon the servant and as a result there's a khiswa and a blanket over the heart of the believer. So their eyes are locked, their ears are locked and the heart becomes qulf. As a result this veil over them that they can't see the heavens, they can't hear the heavens, they can't get the correct inspiration for their reality. And one of the, the, the greatest sicknesses that shaitan puts upon people to keep these locks in place, he doesn't want them unlocked, he doesn't want the servant to hear their consciousness, he doesn't want the servant to see the reality and the reflection within their heart. And definitely doesn't want the veil to be lifted so they can see, oh my god this um, shaitan is in my house, what is this? So the shaitan plays with people and that they have only short term memory, short term, that short term now my enjoyment, no long term thought. So when you deal and talk with people and you try to give them guidance, it's always a reminder that you have to think in the long run, that every step you do you have to play your hand ten steps ahead. And that's what shaitan plays with people, they don't think like that. He wants them to play short, short uh, path, that only think one step ahead. Take this move because it's fun, do this because it's enjoyable, do this because you feel like it. And what Allah wants for us like a chess game, before you make the move keep your hand on that event and think that if I make this move ten different directions what's going to happen? And that's what separates one whom believes and is moving towards perfection and the one whom their belief is very weak or none at all. And they do things, say, I'm sorry, but that sorry doesn't mean anything. What do you do when you already made the move? 
means that shaitan already got you on that and you're in difficulty. So before what you wear, what you buy, what you do, what you eat, any move you're about to take you have to think in your heart that what will be the effect. So when you give guidance to people say, why you look like this? Oh because it's fashionable. I said, but do you ever think somebody take a photo and show that it's inappropriate what you're wearing? And then later on people who will be important in your life will say, why you look like this? We live in a world closer to judgment day. So imagine like 50 years ago and now move 50 years forward, 50 years ago you had to tell people, be conscious of what you do for a day may come where God will judge you. And they had to use their faith and say, yeah you may be God, yeah I may judge me, I don't know, do you think really He would know what I'm doing? And basically the people of faith would win and say, no He knows and, and the people with no faith would say, no He doesn't know. Fast forward now to the life we live now, actually everybody has a camera. And whatever you do somebody took a picture of it, whatever you say somebody has recorded it. Everything is being documented by someone somewhere known and unknown to you. But that's like the kingdom of Allah The Allah is saying, why are you so frightened? You know I was watching everything, recording everything through your own eyes. So now you don't even need that much faith to believe that. You know that everybody's taking a picture and someday it's going to own up on your, on your page and on your social media and how you're going to explain that to your family, to your children, to your future, to your job. So now they begin to even have proofs of this way of faith and the way of accountability. If they don't believe in Allah at least your whole future will be based on what you have done, what you have said, what's been documented from what you've done in your actions. So we've come closer to judgment day for us to understand it's not about even faith anymore. You can say there's technical proof somebody's got a photo of you doing that, somebody has recorded you saying that. So you have to be 10 steps ahead, don't let somebody engage you in something and you write it and all of a sudden they have now what you've written. Don't, don't type and text anything that you wouldn't want somebody to snap shot and put out to be public. But nobody thinks like that, nobody thinks ten steps ahead and that's because shaitan plays with them, think only one step. They do it then, oh my gosh I don't know what I just did, I don't know how I'm going to protect myself, what I'm going to do or they're so heedless that they don't even think about it and that's the danger. Means the people of tafakkur and contemplation is they have a high level of consciousness and as a result of their high level of consciousness there's continuous inspiration within them, be cautious. Before you write that, be cautious. Before you say that, be cautious. Before you photograph that, be cautious. So that you're always understanding shaitan is attacking and you're going to counter move and move so that strategically every move is a protected move to the best of our abilities inshaAllah. Without that then you see how people are completely putting themselves into difficulties and satanic traps and, and hardships and every type of uh, difficulty. We pray that Allah grant us more and more of a correct character in which to contemplate every move and contemplate what will be the effect of saying this and doing this and acting like this inshaAllah so that to have good character inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi you have mentioned that we can read Surah Ikhlas al Taraweeh if we haven't memorized the Qur'an can we just read that or other surahs that we know as well? You can do anything you want, recite anything you want, it's a time to recite Qur'an. What we described was only the secret of Surat al-Ikhlas, the three Surat al-Ikhlas you get the barakah of reciting all of Qur'an. So there's a hikmah and a wisdom for those who recite Surat al-Ikhlas. And the companions had complained of another companion that he only reads Surat Al-Ikhlas, doesn't read any other surahs. 
and Prophet described to them, Zillah he likes Surat al-Ikhlas, it's okay that he reads Surat al-Ikhlas. But maybe that companion had the secret of that reality and the immensity of its weight and it's the only surah that doesn't talk about anything other than tawheed and an in-depth reality of the oneness of Allah and the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad qul huwa. That Allah addressing the who and the reality of who so has an immense reality. So it's good for those who wish to meditate and contemplate and the reading of Qur'an is one issue so they read Qur'an separately so that they learn the Qur'an to the best of their ability they read in English. Then the Qiyam al-Layl is meditation. So whatever induces the greatest feeling of meditation recite that which is easy, that which is important to you and that which has an immense barakah and you're reciting and meditating through those 20 rakahs. Whether you're on a chair and your, your, your body is not well and you have to pray, these are sunnah prayers so they can be done on a chair. So again it's a meditation, don't link the two as reciting Qur'an. So the recitation of Qur'an for Ramadan is a separate action. If you're Arab and you have it to be memorized and you understand your memorization then it's a meditation for you, the same point. But if you're Ibn Hafiz and you don't know what you're reciting then there are separate actions, recite whatever you want because you have and you have it memorized but you should be reading Qur'an and understanding in your language so that the Qur'an can teach you and talk to you inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Should we avoid choosing professions which nature is listening to complaints and negativity? If you have a choice then that's up to you. If you like to listen to complaints and negativity then go ahead. <laughs> If you have no choice and that's the career that you've sort of trained for then keep your wudu, your taweez and you know keep all of your training and Allah inshaAllah defend you and protect you against that negativity. But if we describe something that this path or this street here is fire and say, excuse me Shaykh, uh, do you mind if I walk on there and go right ahead? If your feet don't burn, go for it. But if, if it is hot to you and you find it to be difficult and heavy, don't do it. So you, ha you have to have a certain training and a certain understanding. And that's why then the training is the meditation, the practices, keeping wudu, keeping your ta'weez and then you pretty much have to copy the way of the shaykh because he's only listening to negative comments. So everybody's emailing and commenting of their difficulties and their problems but that requires them they be dressed with their tajallis and practices and, and how to fortify themselves from negativities. And some people are, are very empathetic means or, or very soft in their feeling. If they hear people's problems it overwhelms them because their soul takes it too much. Arts. So the, those people should not be anywhere near that and they have to defend themselves and protect themselves because their, their soul overly gets involved in every issue. So everyone to their understanding and to their level inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, is Laylatul Qadr a physical event that the believer experiences? Versus a psychological event. Yeah, everything is is a real event. The the whole <laughs> that 
this is the way of the way of haq and truth. So everything is a, is an actual event. It's not a, a philosophy that the philosophy of power will be coming, maybe some energies are coming on this day or this night. It's an actual event that are coming and uh, everything is, is a haqqaiq. Now when we reach to the haqqaiq it becomes more and more true. One year you may feel just the power in the whole month, another year you may find that there are four pockets of qadr in this month that come at eight. So these are all the, the nights of the eighth, so the powers of nine they're all qadr. So on the eighth what's the next power of nine? On the seventeenth, what's the next one? Twenty-one, no, twenty-seven, no, seven, seventy, what's the next one? Eight, eight more become twenty-six night for the twenty-seven. And then the last night, the twenty-nine which is hiya. So these are four pockets of power that dress every month and especially the month of Ramadan because these are the, the nine, the reality of nine within that month. So the, the eighth night of Ramadan maqrib becomes the power of nine. So then that has a tajalli and an energy that's coming. Depending upon how subtle we train ourselves that event becomes more real. Right? So we have ilmu yaqeen, the knowledge of reality, so we study the knowledge of this month. Ayna yaqeen is that we meditated and we become more sensitive to this reality. So maybe the first time I do it I feel energies and I can't sleep at night, the energy is so strong and maybe the next year when I do it I start to feel it on the eighth night there was an event and maybe on the, the next one is eighteen, so that would be the seventeenth night. I feel an energy coming. So all of these then each time as the student is evolving or ascending they become more subtle until they begin to feel. And the tajalli for the month, subhanahu man taqara bil qudrati wal taqa. So it's all about energy and qudra and entering into these oceans of eternal energy. So this is a, is a very powerful month. And this has to do with the sultanate of the heavens and that Allah is, is dressing with immense, immense powers, immense lights. But everything being taught is based on real. Now the real is based on how much we entered into the truth and the haqqaiq. So there's an initial real to believe then there's a real in which you feel it. There's a real in which your entire being is lost within it and there's a real in which you're in the dress of your shaykh and inside that reality because you've lost yourself and went into the fana. And in that ocean of fana then it becomes a very real events and very real powers that are coming in this month. It's, it's a month in which to destroy everything and knock and destroy all bad characteristics. So Allah is sending an immense power, a power that burns shaitans and burns everything bad but puts the believer in a state of bliss like the fire of Jahannam. So this fire comes down and the fire of Jahannam it burns all that which is bad. So when there's a fire and this energy that comes, it burns the bad ego, it burns the shayateen and it burns away the impurities of the person and their character. So that's what's left is gold. But the gold is in a fire. So they see people on these, these, these shows of gold, they take all this big pound of people's jewelries and mix with all sorts of different qualities of gold. And they just put it into a melting. When you look at all that work was done and they put it into this melting thing, that melting thing is extremely hot. 
So it must be like all these gold pieces are screaming, ah, save me, right? Then become liquefied and as it's liquefied they're adding some other things and other elements to burn away impurities. Then when they take that hot liquid out they pour it and becomes like this beautifully pure gold bar made from bunch of scraps of gold. Well Ramadan is like that for the believers that we come with all of our scraps, good and bad actions and Allah then begins uh, putting us in a baking pot. Ramadan means sun baked. So it means that you're being baked by the ovens of the heavens in which like a melting, smelting pot began to hit an enormous amount of spiritual heat. If you can tap into that heat then Ramadan becomes very powerful for you. You can't sleep, you got a lot of energy sort of flowing through you and you understand the, how the sustenance and sustaining oneself with energy and becomes more and more powerful as we're getting into the, the power nights. So this is the goal of it as we become more and more subtle and more and more spiritual, more and more in tafakkur and training then we begin to understand. And we said before that there's a Ramadan in which you understand all of your senses are in fasting. So when you begin to fast one year good with your ears and try your best not to hear bad talk and bad gossips bad sounds then the spiritual hearing begins to open. There's a power that comes and begins to dress the spiritual hearing and you can hear the thoughts of other people. You can hear the realities of the heavens and then your spiritual seeing. Ramadan comes and begins to burn away all the, the things you see with your eyes and the not so good things that you see with the eyes that put a veil upon their eyes. That's what shaitan was trying to do, right? He wanted to veil your ears so he keeps making all bad comments, whisperings, make you hear bad things and you can't have anything hearing from your ear. So the believers fight to purify their ears. And then they want to open their hearts but shaitan makes tiktok. So that their eyes are just completely bombarded with negativity and, and uh, inappropriate. Why? So that he can fill the heart with badness and bad character and bad energies. So then the believer's great struggle and fight is then to clean their heart, keep their heart to be appropriate, pass quickly through anything that's not appropriate. And as a result then you're cleaning your eyes and fighting in the struggle to purify the eyes to unlock the power of your eyes. If your ears are opening you're beginning to hear, if your spiritual eyes are opening you begin to see through your spirituality and the reflection through the heart. And as a result Allah begin to slowly lift the veil, the khiswa that's blocking us. Like these creatures they put a bag on the head of the creature so that it doesn't know where it is and start kicking everyone. Allah want them to begin to lift the veil of reality so that the servant understands the depth in which their spiritual reality is achieving, the, the heights in which the spiritual reality is achieving. So these are important in the progression of our spiritual practices and spiritual reality inshaAllah. And Ramadan is a great opportunity for those to be burned, the badness to be burned so that Allah can open the realities for the servant inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is the covenant made between us and Allah all the same or there are specific things for each soul is tasked with? No, so it would have to be very unique, it can't be the same. Allah didn't ask everybody to give five dollars. So it means everyone to their gift and what they've given. 
that what you would do and how you would serve and that when you came across your reality and your shaykhs that you would follow, you would accept and all that you would serve to the amount that Allah gave as your destiny, what your skill, what your ability, what your rizq, what everything that was given to you, Allah called that to be of service. My Allah can't call me to, to come and recite if I'm not a reciter. If they don't have that voice how how that be my calling? So means with what you have, you promised Allah that you would give and that you would put it on the table to be of service to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's what the shaykh's guidance is, is to burn your nafs, burn your shaitan so that your soul sits on the chair. At that time you'll know who you are, you'll know what abilities you have and that how you promised Allah those would be of service to Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why that when you go with the shaykh, you're loyal to the shaykh so that you can fulfill your covenant. If you don't reach to your ahad and to your reality and reach to how you're supposed to be with the shaykh to do these things that you're supposed to be doing that you promised Allah The nafs doesn't like that so the nafs then begin to switch around the person, go here, then you go there and then before you know it the person who bounced around so much they achieved nothing, no one knows them and they were of no service other than the service to their nafs and to their ego. And then to be of service means this is what we promised Allah that we would come, we would accept and we would then begin to serve with our abilities that Allah has given to us. And that's the responsibility of the shaykhs then to put the servant towards the ahad and the covenant. Many people then call and start emailing, the shaykh, what's my service, what's my service? It doesn't work like that. That's like saying, what's my code? Your service is that you're supposed to be meditating and then they don't even have the book and they want to know how they're going to reach their ahad and their covenant. Well, how are you going to reach anything if you're not going to meditate and contemplate? First make the connection to find out who you are and that with that connection that's why we described over all these years that without the connection shaitan and nafs is sitting on the chair, this discussion then becomes completely irrelevant. When shaitan and nafs are sitting on your chair do you think you have a, any way of achieving your covenant with Allah now people who come and then begin to fight the shaykh and begin to backbite the shaykh and begin to do every type of craziness, do you think that you're achieving your covenant with Allah That this is what he wanted from you, this is what Prophet wanted from you? No, so as long as that's relevant and the ego and the nafs are sitting on the chair then that discussion is irrelevant. That's why the first step is then they meditate, contemplate, you don't want to get the book or to the website, study how to do the meditation, how to connect your heart, feel feel the connection. Once they start to progress upon that connection then what happens? The three states of matter will burn, they'll come as very solid and so much connection is coming that they feel burning and everything around them is agitating and they want to run. And they run to where? Do you think there's a, a, a garden that you can run to when you ran out of the garden of the shaykh or did you just run into Jahannam? This is a garden in the garden of Prophet So imagine Prophet's garden, huge and one little corner of it is here, the shaykh is there and brings people into the garden. When you run what happens to you? You decided to leave the Muhammadan way and that reality but where are you leaving into? There's not other gardens that you can go to, doesn't work that way because what Prophet gave to you like an army. You are in this regiment and your duty is there. You don't leave the regiment thinking you'll go find another one because they don't trust anyone else coming to them, why are you coming to them, us from somewhere else? What you left is the Muhammadan realities 
and you've been convinced by shaitan come to us and you went towards shaitan. So there's no leaving, there's only achieving. So people think they're leaving, going to and they'll do it themselves. And what Allah told Sayyidina Nuh when he built the ship and his son said, I'm not coming, I'll find a mountain somewhere else. Means I'll find some other wali to be with, not with you and your ship. And there is no mountain for you to find because once you leave the boat then your character is known by all the captains. Because any captain in any boat, why would they want somebody who's left the boat? That person now is, is under the influence of their shaitan, no one wants to take that in, it's a danger. So our life is then to stay. When the testing is tough you stay and achieve and achieve and achieve and it's not an easy process. And as a result of achieving they stay, they combat all their bad characters, all their devils and all their demons. And if they didn't think they had demons that's when they become surprised that, oh I'm so angry all the time, I'm, I'm upset about this, I'm upset about that, oh whispering is coming, oh so many whisperings are coming. Yeah the demons had you for a long time, did you think that uh, you wouldn't recognize that they're whispering to you? As soon as you become a little bit of spiritual ability you realize how much demons are around you. So this is a part of the awakening. To not be conscious and to think, oh everything was so great before, then watch the matrix because they live in illusion, they think life is so beautiful. But when Allah wants you to wake up what happens? All of a sudden this life becomes a, a very dirty matrix and Allah wants to show you how dirty it is. That the, these things are very demonic, these energies are very demonic and they're all around. Just you were heedless to them. Once you become conscious of them you see that the energies are very bad everywhere. Now where are you going to run at that time? Does it make any logic to you for you're going to run? Where are you going to run to? After they're opening and, and teaching you everything's demonic, you're running to the hands of demons and you find what? Allah described what? That they find no safety except in Allah So you can't run from Allah to find safety in Allah why are you running? You have to sit and fight your demons with your practices, with all that is being taught to the person, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How can we turn back if we keep turning and running? How do you turn back? You regain where you left off, you go back, renew your bayad, recite it for yourself, make your istighfar and live a life of service and khidmat, be of service, give donations, spread the links, spread the knowledges and regain yourself and your practices. And tell yourself there is nowhere to go but back to the hands of shaitan. You cannot leave Allah to go to Allah and you cannot leave a garden of Sayyidina Muhammad to go to another garden of Sayyidina Muhammad It doesn't work that way because they… the one who would accept you would think you're a traitor. The way you left after they put their effort upon you they gave to you from their fruits and their realities, you ate from them, drank from them, took from them, like now you stole from them, ran and now you're coming to us to do what? Uh, I'd like to sit and steal yours too, uh, okay. So it doesn't work that way, watch, watch any movie you want and learn from just movies, uh, at least Hollywood can teach people manners. It doesn't work. If you run from one kingdom there's not another kingdom that lets you in because this path is based on loyalty. Sit, practice, do your practices, do your effort, sit and fight through your demons and, and whatever shaitans are coming. And there's no running from the Muhammadan reality especially now because we describe people are going to run. 
They're going to think that their safety is, is running into the fire, into the flames of shayateen and dajjal and dajjal's way and say, no, no, they're doing this, they're this, like this. But no, it's not, it's not the way. They have to have istiqam fi tariqat that hold firm and be firm onto your tariqah so that Allah can shower you from His waters and His fountains of life and eternity. And that's the way of Sayyidina Muhammad There were people who would go up and make uh, masjids and say, why you don't come and pray in our masjid? And Allah said, don't ever step into their masjid. Means you can't leave the way of Prophet and now go into something else and say, well I'll just do this because everything was based on loyalty. Everything was based on you struggling and fighting your bad character, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Having grown up in a very harsh environment, we now feel that we are allergic to love and create problems anytime love is around. What can we do to accept love? Yeah, listen to the teachings and do exactly as the shaykh is teaching you to do. Do acts of love that be kind to people, make lots of salawats to show your love for Prophet be generous, spread the links and do a life of khidmat and service. Those are all acts of love. If you can't do that and you only love yourself, then the, there is no, no help and mercy for someone who has no love within their heart. So you have to push yourself as uh, much as possible to do these things and do these practices. All of these are practices of love. If you can't help other people then this is a problem. If you can't support other people then this is a problem. If you can't live a life of khidmat that's a huge problem. If you can't make salawats to show your love for Sayyidina Muhammad then we already become defeated by shaitan. And I don't think anyone listening right now is at that state. Because if shaitan fully grabbed you he wouldn't let you even to listen to this talk, inshaAllah. InshaAllah Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Yudhu Sharif Al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wa Alaihi Wasallam Wa Kiram Wa Alaihi Mashaykhina Fi Tariqat Al Nashbandiyat Al Aliyya Khasatan Ruhi Ma Tariqa Ghawta Khaliqa Shah Nashba Muhammad Raisi Al Bukhari Sudan Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani Dhan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani Mandan Shaykh Isham Kabani Shaykh Adhan Kabani Shaykh Muhammad Radha Amdi Khaliq Al Fujit Dawani Sahil Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima al-Tiz alayhi salam, Sayyidina wa Sadatina wa Siddiqina al-Fatiha. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.